Welcome Leo singles. Leo totally in super singles, completely singles. Using the Gilded Tarot. Uh, classic deck, my oldest two, my favorite. Um, this reading is a purely predictive read. It's um, gonna, I call it Meet the Soulmate. It's gonna hopefully pick up on this person who's meant to be the one that's the right one for you. So it's always a positive reading because it simply asks who's your soulmate, who's the one that's best for you. And uh, you'd be best for them. And when that spirit, like, I was thinking, like, what if instead of, like, a, uh, select a husband or something, like, they have these TV shows, we select a soulmate, you know? Uh, soulmates competing, you know, for your, uh, pick me, because I think there's more than one, but, uh, so it kind of makes it easier. But this is like, we've opened up, we've cleared a runway, maybe the soulmate hasn't been able to get to us, or any of them, you know? Because uh, we've been busy doing other things and doing other people and stuff, but now we're clear, we're single, we're not thinking about anyone, because then that would be the heart spread, which you also do. And always on Wednesdays, this Leo and Virgo day. So um, right now, I uh, just try to get an idea about their personality, behavior, from personal history, and some astrology from them. So this is in the emotional position. We'll pull two cards. Page of Swords over the Eight of Swords. So, yeah, they had a troubled childhood. Uh, kind of come back to this. Remember, this is your purse. It's not meant to be triggery. And, you know, uh, it's the one that's right for you. It's not necessarily someone that's perfect. It's not angel to human being. It's just the one that best fits your soul contract, that, that your contracts most uh, uh, work best together. Um, but this would be someone that it's hard to see that not being a very difficult childhood. Uh, I don't, it could have been alone, a, an only child or a middle child that felt lost. Um, this could go a lot of different ways. I tell you, it's not like an elder child, you know, oldest child uh, energy at all. Mm -mm. Could be the baby of the family. Um, But this one, this person here, your person, they'll tell you, I'm trying to go to their childhood now in this emotional position. Um, they felt isolated and alone. Um, it could have been they were sick. It could have been they're in some kind of highly restrictive environment. You know, maybe their parents were wildly, I want to say wildly, uh, radically, strictly religious or something, but... Um, it could have even been abuse, you know. They they would. It's an energy of kind of feeling tortured. Here it's in the conscious position. It's page of swords, kind of more what they were and how they might conceive of it. And down with the eight of swords, that's the underlying energy. Um, so there's a lot of pain there, you know, for the child. Imagine you can kind of just intuit that. Um, so again, you know, it just because. We had a bad childhood doesn't mean we're not uh, your soulmate. Let's put it that way. Intellectually, the Three of Pentacles. And that's going to be, and that's one of my favorite cards, you know. Good worker card over, over the world. Wow, with Major Connor here. Mm. Wow. Wow. This is really intense. This major arcana being here, it's in the intellectual column. Uh, I do see that where I see the sun. Um, and that surely seems like a Virgo sun to me. I mean, I don't know, three in the third house and a good worker card. I mean, this is the crafts person that really just genuinely takes great care in the work they do. That's the person, here's the card. And, you know, they're the glass blower that other glass blowers look up to, you know? Uh, the sword maker that uh, all the other sword makers wish they could be. And that's kind of would be in their nature. So, um, I gotta be honest with you, the emotional energy feels kind of tortured. 
But with the Three of Pentacles, it seems like they were able to bring it into some kind of good balance. And I believe they suffered some great good fortune along the way. So this would be a story they would tell. And this could literally be uh, money or, uh, yeah, uh, or just a, a dramatic change in circumstances um, that you might could say was through no fault of their own. Um, it's looking right at the Eight of Swords. You know, th this could be a, a grandparent, a, a aunt or uncle or some person, and not in not in a bad way, but actually stepping in on their behalf. Um, it could be like somebody paid for their cost. Somebody really said, you know, I love you. I'm gonna take care of you, and paid for their um, education put a fund away for that um, somebody really I see someone like really stepping up for them and this could be a scholarship you know because also with the three of pentacles like they earn it they earn it um, they would be a very good student I bet you they're going to have a Virgo sun and Mercury and probably conjunct you know I'm telling you right now that's not that unusual So, I don't know how you feel about Virgos, but, you know, <laughs> you really can't tell anything by sun sign, how much straw to do century. It's like, that's crazy, shutting yourself off to a whole sun sign, you know. There's so many ways it could go. A lot of Virgos bang, a lot of Leo energy. So, you know, they might have a Mars and a Venus on your sun, man. And, I mean, ooh, la, la, you can't go much better than that you're going to believe in sinistry, which I do. Um, so that's a story they might tell. Um, how exactly they made this the best out of their situation here. They had help. Um, they, um, I want to call it like an intervention. And, um, you know, this kind of thing, you know, could definitely think it's angelic. It's guided. Um, it, they may, um, you know, Virgo uh, yeah, is one of the most highly karmic signs I've read. You know, um, Stephen Arroyo is my mentor. Um, you know, along with Scorpio and Pisces. But a lot of times they have good karma, I think. You know, um, they're just kind of innocent. You know, that's that kind of uh, you know, Virgo energy, energy. And so it's, I got to see this as a kind of karmic reward for your person. I don't know that they would conceive of it that way. I can't tell if they're that esoteric kind of person. Right off the bat, it seems like they would tend to be kind of logically minded and, you know, but uh, you never know. A lot of Virgos make wicked good, you know, astrologers and, all that, you know, tarot readers. Okay, this is going to be the sexual perfect uh, column, the devil. Uh, let's uh, think about that a minute. And then this is going to be the moon. This is in the sexual and love nature, I call it. So emotional, intellectual, sexual, love nature. And we'll look at the core values and lifestyle. I can think of that as the four pillars of a good relationship anyway come back to the sexual part but wow two major kana hot and cold <laughs> so king of pentacles wow this says a lot right there this is uh, in their core values and lifestyle and that's going to be over the tower wow wow um this person has a theme of like overcoming adversity. It's really strong. Also, they're pretty conservative. I'm not going to go with Trump voter, but they're, they probably are someone that basically is going to respect the status quo. Um, they're going to um, probably be in that do the Virgo thing and they're going to really understand all the details of whatever situation you're talking about, <laughs> the world. And they're going to come to certain conclusions. And they're going to be pretty solid about it. Like this person, you know, they're, they're not going around going like, gee, I wonder 
who I am and why am I, what's my purpose, they learn something, you know, and this experience in a child is so karmic. I often see the energy here in the sexual love is, goes back to the emotional, and here in the intellect goes to the core values and lifestyle. And it does here. So the world and the tower. What's the world? Beginning of something new. What's the tower? Something falling apart. They have Pluto on the sun. Pluto opposite the sun. Add that in. Pluto opposite the sun energy. Or square. Or real close. Hmm? Yeah, could be conjunct. Could be, you know, eighth house. Something going on with them. With the Virgo there. Hmm. I think they're going to have a Libra, uh, Venus, what we're going to be looking for. I'm going to call that with the moon. That's how I'm going to see it. Because I think they're a Virgo personality here. And what I really think is strong with them is the Leo Mars. This person has a Leo Mars that's, that's strong. Strong, what do I mean? You know, it's in the eighth house, the first house, it's in good aspect to Pluto. Mm -hmm. That would be a biggie. Why I wouldn't be surprised to see their Mars in Leo sextile or trine to Pluto. In the Libra Venus really suits them. You know, I got a feeling, I want to say it, I I got a really good friend, and I said this to him the other day, not, not that long ago. I said, you know, you're kind of karmaless. That's kind of crazy, kind of simple, simplified. But there's something to it, and, you know, it's like, when you've lived a good life and you've just focused on yourself, done what, done your work. I mean, this is someone doing good work, King of Pentacles, or someone that they over time accumulated wealth and security, and they probably their own boss or run their own company, or now they're retired. Um, they know adversity. Like um, God, I was thinking the other day. Uh, you know, a really good general knows how to manage defeat because they know that you can lose a battle and still win the war. That could be this person's motto, guys. See if that doesn't ring a bell when you say it to him. Let me know what you think of this here. Leo, so if I like say you may not see this person pop up, get on dating site, start chatting up people, and see if these stories don't, placements don't come through. Share, like, subscribe. Thank you, guys.